Hi, I'm Nathan Hara, postdoctoral fellow at the University of Geneva. Uh, welcome to this uh, second tutorial on the use of days with a more advanced example. So again, this is a platform uh, the, the financed by Planetas and developed here at the University of Geneva, and these are the people who are working on it. So let's get started. Uh, here I will look for 55 cancri. <coughs> Uh, as you see, uh, there is a lot more data than uh, in the case of 51 peg, this uh, public data. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the duplicate data. So data from the same instrument, exactly same raw data, but different data reduction software. Um, I'm removing this one. I'm removing the oldest uh, Hamilton data, the oldest high risk data. So that now I have only one high risk, one Hamilton, and one LOD data set. Furthermore, I'm applying the night binning, which is really important in that case because high res in particular has a, uh, an observation strategy with uh, a lot of data points per night, uh, typically three data points per night. Now I apply the data, data selection and that's a very important step. Uh, okay, now uh, I have the data I'm going to analyze. Uh, first, very strong peak in the periodogram. And this is the significance level. So you see that it's very significant. Um, This is also a known planet. And notice that uh, every time I fit an additional planet, I refit all the parameters. Again, when I click on this fit icon, um, this fits simultaneously all the parameters for which the box fit is checked. So these ones, the offsets of the instruments, as well as the Keplerian signals. Uh, third Keplerian signal, and you see that here the false sound probability is also very small, so it's very significant, and it's a known planet around 55 Cancri. The more data you have, the more complicated, and, and the more complicated is your model, the longest will be the fit, which is to be expected. Here, this is the famous uh, 55 Cancri E planet, which was originally announced at 2.8 days. And uh, uh, as before, we can check for the aliases of 2.8. And indeed, you find that the correct period, which has a much stronger peak in the periodogram, is uh, an alias of this one. So this is the, the explanation that Dawson and Fabriki have given in their paper in 2010 on why we have uh, one, why this period was claimed instead of this one. <coughs> so I had also Kepler and Sigma for this one. And I see uh, the 55 concrete F to 261 days. And now I see something strange, which is a peak at uh, 1700 days. This is not a known planet. Uh, and uh, so maybe it's because I didn't refit all the model. So let's, let's refit everything. It doesn't disappear. Maybe it's because uh, the noise level of the instruments was poorly estimated. I have these instruments. Perhaps not as well. Okay. We fit everything. No, still does not disappear. So at this point, before rushing to publishing a paper that you have you have discovered a planet at 1700 days in 55 country, you can look at the literature. In that case, the latest um, global analysis of the 55 country system is the Bourrier et al. 2018. And what it said is that from um, 
the KKRS S index, they see a cycle period at 10.5 plus minus 0.3 years. So there might be a, psych, uh, uh, a magnetic cycle in this star. 10.5 years, it's um, 3,830 days. And they fit it with the Keplerian function <coughs> here, and they obtain this value of the, of the magnetic cycle. So this is nowhere near uh, the period that we have here. Um, so this is this indeed is a good candidate for a planet, but we will see that in fact it's not favorable. To do that, I'm going to fit this signal. Now I refit everything and you will see that now I have too many parameters. The fit does not converge anymore. So the, this is to be expected for any kind of the fitting routine. Uh, in some cases, the, the parameter space and your objective function is just too tricky to minimize and the fit uh, does not reach convergence. So to help the fit, I'm going to fix the value of the instrumental noise, which, which would not ch change much anyway. Now the fit works. Now I have a, a six signals model plus offsets. And I still have uh, power in the region of one day. And as we've seen in the case of 51 peg, this is probably due to, uh, to instrumental effects. Now let's look at um, these fields that we didn't talk much about before. Here you have statistical indicators. You have the chi-squared of the fit, you have the reduced chi-squared uh, of the fit, the log likelihood, the log posterior likelihood if you want to put priors on your parameters. If you want to do that, uh, you can uh, add a prior by checking this box uh, um, close to uh, any parameter that you might fit. And uh, here, the parameter that we are going to look at is the Bayesian information criterion. It's something that is described in the statistical significance course uh, of this uh, second summer workshop. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is to save this model so that now I have the past model. Uh, the, in the past model, I have the value of the, of the peak. Now, let me change, let me delete this uh, Keplerian function so that I just have the five known planets of 55 for free. I do the fit. And uh, I'm going back to uh, my uh, um, previous periodogram. Now, in this paper, they say 300 and 3,800 days, which comes from the S index. Uh, so this is an extra analysis. And if you analyze the photometry, you find something uh, similar. And I'm going to do something which will seem a little bit weird. I add the Keplerian at close to 380 days. Um, 10.5 10 days is uh, 3,830 days, approximately. And I remove it from the fit. I, I fix it. No. OK, now I, I'm, I'm, I have another fit. I still have. And, and I see that the, the power at uh, 1,000 and uh, at 1,700 days has completely disappeared. So this is a very, this is an instance of a tricky situation where you add uh, a signal which does not appear on the residuals, but in fact, if you add it, it changes the values of all these other signals so that the global fit of the data is completely changed. And one signal that appears on the residuals, when you take into account all the signals at the same time, it disappears. Now you look at the Bayesian information criterion. It's actually lower than, 
the, the current model has a delta big of minus 42. So the current model is privileged over um, the other model with a free um, parameter. Now, if I do this, if I initialize the fit at uh, this value and, and I redo the fit so that I have exactly the same number of free parameters in this model as before, then the delta big is still minus 35. Um, so that's the, the model with a magnetic cycle uh, here modeled by a Keplerian function, which is not optimal, uh, um, but it's, uh, it's uh, reasonable at least. Uh, is working better, so we d we we didn't find another planet uh, in 55 Cancri. Uh, just uh, one last word: uh, you can look at the S index by uh, going to this box, scrolling down, and selecting the S index, and you will have the the high-res data, and indeed find something at uh, um, 300 and uh, 3,500 days around this period. You see that here, because of the spectral resolution, it's hard to determine exactly between, uh, say, 3,000 and, uh, and uh, 7,000 days, what is the exact uh, period of uh, the magnetic cycle. Um, one important thing is that you see that here you have an uncertainty, on this peak you have an uncertainty on, uh, of uh, several thousands of days. But here, when you look at the width, the typical width of a peak, it's more of the order <coughs> of uh, a fraction of a day. And if you, if you go to uh, even lower periods, the width of a peak, so the uncertainty on a period is, is even smaller. It's, uh, <coughs> it's a very small fraction of a, of a day. And this comes from the fact that the periodogram has a constant, the, or any kind of period analysis has a constant resolution in frequency and not in period. If you wanted to look at uh, the, the periodogram in frequency, you can, look, you can uh, push that icon. And here you have the periodogram as a function of the frequency. So that in, in this case, you see that all the periodogram peaks have approximately the same width. And again, it's because you have a constant resolution, almost constant resolution in frequency, but not in period. Um, okay, so that concludes this uh, second tutorial on 55 Cancri. And I hope you have fun with this.